Kia ora everyone, happy World Meteorology Day 2020. Warm greetings to you all and I hope you are staying well and positive despite the current situation. My name is Fong, a scientist here in MSL. Today we are going to talk about the MSL cable balance, the challenge and the updates of this project, which is a joint effort from members across different sections of MSL. Two years ago, at our World Meteorology Day event, we have given a talk on MSL cable balance but that was mainly about the motivation and the working principles of a cable balance, which can be a useful background material to this presentation. And that post-talk excerpt is available in the link below. In this presentation, we will start by giving a quick recap on the redefinition of kilogram and the principle of cable balance. Then we will describe the design features of MSL cable balance. We will discuss more in details about the technical challenges of creating a unique cable balance and how we are addressing them, and our progress so far in the quest of making the MSL cable balance. Now, let's start. The kilogram has just been redefined a year ago. It is no longer defined by the International Prototype Kilogram, an artifact stored in a boat in Paris. The kilogram is now defined in terms of the Planck's constant, which is a fundamental constant of nature. By the way, do you remember this cake that you ate in the WMD last year? It has the diagram that you see here, which is one of the most important diagrams in metrology. And that's why we put it on the cake so that you can eat it and remember it. It shows other SI units and the fundamental constants of which they are based on. For example, the meter is defined by the speed of light and the ampere is defined by taking the electron charge. The principle of defining the SI units with fundamental constant is that the SI units are now fixed and they can be realized by anyone at any corner of the earth. The kilogram is now no longer tied to a single vagarious artifact, which was unstable and could be stolen or damaged, and that would cause a significant disruption to the international mass standard traceability chain. Instead now, SI unit of mass can be realized at anywhere on earth, even on Mars, at any point on the mass scale, for example, one kilogram to one gram to one milligram, and down to the nanograms level, or maybe to one millionth of a nanogram, which is the approximate mass of the notorious coronavirus. Accurate methods are actually being developed at this scale. The new definition allows the advancement of technologies such as in pharmaceuticals, electronics, and nanotechnology, and it no longer impedes the improvements of other measurement units. There is currently international effort going into realizing the new definition at one kilogram to ensure a smooth transition between the old and new definition. This is mainly done in two ways. One is by using the silicon sphere method and the other is the cable balance method. In fact, this was considered as one of the toughest experiments by a Nature article back in 2012. There are currently about 10 cable balances around the world. Following the redefinition of kilogram, there will be a few international comparisons for realization of the new kilogram in the next decade or two. This is to compare the performance of the cable balances and other realization and to establish the long-term stability of cable balance as a primary realization. There is still ongoing effort to reduce the uncertainties of these experiments. There are also interests from the metrology community to develop the cable balances with novel and practical designs. For example, smaller, simpler, and cheaper cable balances that use different technologies. This may mean that developing economies would have the opportunity to build their own in the future. This slide is a quick recap on the main principle of cable balance. It is basically an apparatus to compare gravitational force on a reference mass with the electromagnetic force on a current carrying coil in a magnetic field. From there, you can derive an expression where electrical power is equal to mechanical power when you operate the cable balance in two different modes. This means by measuring quantities like voltage and current where the Planck's constant is embedded in, and gravity and velocity that are associated with the careful force balancing process, we can obtain the mass value. The main challenge for this, of course, is that we have to do this with great precision and simultaneously. Here we describe the MSL cable balance. It is based on a twin pressure balance that are connected to a very sensitive differential pressure sensor, which acts as a force comparator. 
a weighing platform is attached to the piston of one of the pressure balance and is rigidly coupled to the coil with rods. There is a gap in the magnet system where the coil can move through vertically. A laser beam is guided to the coil to measure the velocity. Another important feature is that a very small gap between the piston cylinder reduces unwanted coil movements. The aim here is that the MSL cable balance would be simpler and novel in design and more economic to make if compared to others. This is the only cable balance that uses pressure balancers. There is no cookbook recipe for it. So there are additional challenges that we have to overcome. Next, we'll highlight a few of those challenges and our progress in addressing them. One of the critical requirements for a cable balance is to have a strong and highly uniform magnetic field where the coil is moving through. Of course, to have this, the easiest way is to have big magnets, but that would not be really practical because it would be way too big and way too expensive. Instead, we can make a magnet system that consists of a ring permanent magnet and a yoke of soft magnetic material, put them together to create a magnetic circuit that has highly uniform magnetic field at the coil region. In our case, our magnetic field strength is 0.6 Tesla and has high uniformity. Also, having the magnet entirely enclosed by the yoke screens the magnetic circuit from outside magnetic interference. Now, how do we put this together? This is our first technical obstacle. First, we need to confirm the dimensional specification for the outer and inner yoke and permanent magnet to make sure that when we put them together using the magnet splitter or assembler, they will actually fit so as to not damage the rather brittle magnet material. This was necessary as the tightest clearance between the magnet and the yoke was only 72 micrometers, which is less than the thickness of a piece of paper. Length standards have used the CMM to measure the dimensions of the yolks. For the permanent magnet, we can't put it on the CMM because it is very magnetic. So Lannis and Nina actually have to make a giant non-magnetic thermally insulated micrometer to measure its diameter. After confirming the dimensional clearance, we are ready to bring the magnet system home. We have built a magnet splitter for this. Lenis, who has experience working at high-level tolerances, described that the clearance was so big that you could drive a truck through it. But there can be up to four tons of force involved when the parts come together to complete the magnetic circuit. So we were still very cautious and took all careful steps to make sure things did not go south. This time-lapse video shows the final stages of the magnet assembly. Here you can see that Mark, the person who designed the magnet system, was lowering the outer yoke to engage it nicely with the permanent magnet, which is already secured to the base of the assembly. Hooray, success. The magnet is assembled, permanent magnet with the inner and outer yoke put together. The arrow shows the annular gap where the coil will sit. We are currently setting up a rig to test the coil in the magnetic field. I thought the whole thing looks so beautiful. It kind of reminds me of an architectural style for the Hakka Pico settlements in China, where they build inner rings of housings within the circular outer wall of the settlement and fit more circles when there is space. One of the most challenging issues that any cable balance can face is the issue of alignments. So we are currently experimenting with different techniques to carefully address them. For example, how to ensure the laser for measuring the velocity of the coil is aligned to gravity, which is always pointing in the vertical direction. Also, any misalignment of the coil in relative to the magnetic field will cause the coil to tilt. These are not good. Any of these misalignments will produce measurement errors and increase the overall uncertainty significantly. The angular misalignment that we are talking about here is only on the order of few tens of microradians. Now, how much is a microradian? To illustrate this, imagine that you can launch a bazooka, or maybe Chuck Norris can launch a bazooka that can reach straight from the Earth to a target on the Moon, and you just miss that target by about 500 meters. This angular deviation is one microradian. This will be pretty difficult, as you will imagine. But how difficult is this? 
There is this ongoing lunar laser ranging project to find out the exact distance between the Earth to the Moon. The Apollo 15 mission has planted an array of retroreflectors on the Moon and hoping that one day a laser beam from Earth will find it and the round trip time for the laser beam bounced back by the retroreflectors will tell you the lunar distance. To aim at the lunar ranging retroreflectors, the initial laser beam for this experiment has a diameter of 6.5 kilometers by the time it reaches the moon. This is like a rifle aiming for a 50 cent coin that is three kilometers away, which is pretty amazing. So alignment to within a few tens of microradians is indeed a challenging task. One of the reasons why we use a twin pressure balance design is to simplify the alignment for our cable balance. This relies on the fact that there is self-centering force on the piston to help align the coil with the magnetic field, remembering that the coil is attached to the piston. For most conventional pressure balances, the piston is the rotating component. However, in our cable balance, we cannot rotate the piston because the coil and other components are attached to it. And if it rotates, it will just fall apart. So we have to rotate the cylinder instead. We are assembling a setup where the cylinder is attached to a smooth bearing with a small vertical and angular run out to ensure the alignment of the coil. The cylinder has to rotate with at least 0.5 hertz for the self-centering force to take effect. To measure the velocity of the coil, we use laser interferometry. We direct the laser beam to small retroreflectors attached on the coil to track its vertical movement. The reflected beam from the retroreflector will recombine with the reference beam and the detector will receive the signal. This will tell us the displacement of the coil and derive with time to get its velocity, which we hope to reduce the error down to sub parts per million level. We have designed three sets of the interferometers for the cable balance and this will tell us the tilt of the coil as well. Of course, the prerequisite for this is that the vertical laser beam is already aligned very well to the gravity, which itself is a challenge. For voltage measurement, electrical standards have a PJVS with at least two parts per 10 to the eight accuracy, and it has to be stored in a cryostat that is maintained at about four Kelvin. Chris Young is currently developing a very stable current source based on Mita's design. Preliminary results shows four parts per million drift over three hours, which looks quite promising towards a demanding goal. Of course, we have lab tours at every World Meteorology Day event, but we have to practice social distancing this time around, so I'm afraid that's not really possible. However, we still do one here, but a rather quick one and a virtual one. Going back in time, two years ago, our new lab was pretty empty as those who have been to our lab two or one year ago would know. And today it looks pretty different. The lab has filled up with various components and has been busy with activities on different fronts, as you can see. So why are we doing this? Well, firstly, because it is cool. And in the process of tackling difficult metrology problems in making a cable balance, the solutions are transferable for the development of new and better capabilities. It is also a good research project for the development of research skills of scientists in Grace field. We can have mass, pressure, and any other related quantities direct traceability here in New Zealand, and maybe even for the region, since we can have the primary realization of the kilogram. This means that New Zealand mass standards will be more resilient. This is especially true for times like this, when the pandemic has disrupted the logistics chain worldwide. Through this project, MSL can contribute to the global metrology research as we have always been doing. And this also gives an opportunity to collaborate with scientists from other NMIs, for example, BIPM, NPL, METAS, and NIST, who have provided some advice and assistance for our project. In my mind, the challenge of building the MSL cable balance can perhaps be summarized by the following question. How do we make a relatively simpler desktop size cable balance with novel designs and mechanisms while ensuring the uncertainties of each component are kept at parts per 10 to the 8? This 
is the challenge that we have to overcome as we make progress in the journey of creating our own version of chemo balance here in Lower Heart, New Zealand. Why should we keep pushing the boundaries? Just allow me to conclude this presentation with a quote from Steve Chu, a Nobel laureate in physics, during his speech at the 125th anniversary of the METER convention. He said, Accurate measurement is at the heart of physics. And in my experience, new physics begins at the next decimal place. Thank you so much for your attention. Please feel free to contact us if you have any questions. Take care and we'll see you around. Ka kite ano.